All right, good morning. Thank you for being here today. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, this idea of God-given dominion. Um, uh, it's, um, it's a lot. Uh, and what I want to say about that is dominion is not necessarily control. Um, in the Bible, it talks about how God gave Adam dominion over everything that was in the garden. And what this means to me was Adam got to call it. You know, he got to name everything. And this is what we're doing, I think, in our life all day long as we live our life. We're calling this good. We're calling that bad. We're calling this okay, this lovable, this not lovable, this we hate. We call everything something. You know, there's an old story about um, the baseball player Yogi Berra. And uh, he was at bat, and the pitches came in, and, and the ump didn't say anything. And Yogi Berra looks at the ump and says, well, ump, what is it? And the ump says, it ain't nothing till I call it something. <laughs> and this is true about us as well, because we are always in the process of either calling it something that allows us and enables us to have dominion, or we're calling it something, or naming it something, or declaring something about life, or the people who are coming into our life, or situations in the world that actually uh, disempower us and take away or eliminate the possibility of us having dominion. So again, dominion is not control. So in the old days, when Ernest Holmes was alive and he had his radio show, he always opened his show with this idea that there's a power for good in the universe and you can use it. And that is fundamental to the science of mind teaching. There is a power in the universe, we call it the basic law of consciousness, the law of cause and effect, that responds to our thinking. So we're always setting something in motion there. Ernest Holmes later says in his statement called What I Believe, he says, we believe in the control of conditions through the power of the mind. Well, that's really interesting because like all of us, we have been able to have uh, some control over some conditions, but not control over all conditions. And in thinking about this and thinking about this and thinking about this, I realize that that control that we have over conditions is how we respond to those conditions. Right? Because some things we are not going to have that good a control over. You know, you plan a day at the beach, and it's a cloudy day. Well, even though you, you, you are hoping for sun, and maybe you even treated for the sun, the sun is shining, it's just on the other side of those clouds, um, that, it, that you say, well, say, well, gee, I didn't have control over those conditions. But here's the thing. You get to call it something. So whether the sun is out when you're at the beach or not, you get to call it a good day or a lousy day. Now, this becomes really important for us as students of the science of mind because as we live our life in the world today, we're always, I think, in the process of, 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 of labeling everything, of calling everything something. And I think that has everything to do with the experience we continue to have in life. Now, in the science of mind, our teaching is that all power is of God. Absolutely. That each and every one of us, we are maintained and sustained by God. And this is a very absolute spiritual, uh, spiritual statement. To say I am not subject to anything but God, and to look at error and say, like Jesus said to Pilate, you have no power over me except it were given to you by God. Right? So this, this, this situation that I see, uh, I'm reading the paper, I'm reading the news online, I'm watching TV, you know, to say, all right, this situation, you have no power over me except the power that comes from God. You know, imagine that we can, con we can achieve that consciousness to know that, okay, this is out here in the world of effects, but the world, because remember, we are a new thought church. And so we believe in a spiritual truth that exists internally to us. On the unseen side of life, we are not exclusively guided or pushed around in life by external affairs. That's not how we do it in the science of mind. And yet here we are in the world. We are in the world and there are appearances of lots of things, lots of powers outside of us. It looks like disease is a power and lack is a power and heredity is a power and all these different things. But again, come back to what it says in the Bible, that God gave Adam dominion over all that was in the garden. So if you call something bad, if you call something the worst thing to ever happen to me, it will be. It absolutely will be because there is power in your word. Right? But if you say, well, this too shall pass, and, 
and it's just an appearance, and I choose, I choose how I'm going to respond to this. That means I choose how much weight it's going to have in my life, how much influence it's going to have, whether it's going to empower me or limit me, whether I'm going to be adding more love into the world I live in because of my response to this, or whether I'm actually adding to the darkness in the world by how I'm responding to this. See, I think we want to be uh, uh, people of high consciousness, absolutely. And, and, and we want to be in, this, uh, in the world, but, but not completely of it. You know? So this, does this mean that we ignore the things that are happening in the world around us? Well, we all have situations that require our attention. But I also realize that not everything is mine to do. But some things are mine to do. Not everything, but some things are. And so what I simply do again and again is I say, OK, God, is this mine to do? Is there something I am to do here? And sometimes, sometimes it's, yeah, you need to pray. Pray for this person, pray for this situation, send them love, send them light, and that's all I'm given to do. And then other times, you know, oh, I'm supposed to do a little more than that. I'm supposed to do something on the earth plane. I'm supposed to put my, uh, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. I'm supposed to roll up my sleeves and get involved, right? So this is not, um, this doesn't mean ignoring things, right? Because we all have situations that require us to show up um, a little better, to show up a little more of our best self, to show up a little more conscious and loving. Uh, because, you know, because we all have an awareness of things in our life, in our world, that are not as we know they could be, should be. You know, so we want to bring spiritual consciousness. We want to bring a good spiritual awareness to that. So maybe, maybe a way to proceed with this is that if we really are clear, and I know this will be different for everybody, and yet there will be similarities, we, if, if we remember what we really, really value, you know, what is it that's most important to us? Is it our family? Is it our health? Uh, is it our relationships? What, whatever that may be, you know, that realize that, you know, oh wait, God has given me, as God has given all of us, dominion. And so this means, yes, and to some extent, I have some influence in here, uh, I get to call this, whatever it is, something, and I have freedom to respond how I choose to respond, hopefully in the best, most conscious, loving way. See, but God lets us decide how that's going to be. You know, so lots of so-called evil that people uh, sort of overlook uh, in the world, uh, uh, there's been lots of evil that people sort of overlook in the world. But cause and effect, this principle of cause and effect teaches us you know, that if we consciously put out love, love expands in our world. And if we put out hatred, you know, or, or evil, or darkness, or whatever, that expands in our world. So in Science of Mind, we don't want to, we don't have a devil. Do you remember Flip Wilson? I love Flip Wilson. I thought Flip Wilson was just the greatest guy, you know, and he used to dress up as Geraldine um, and say, the devil made me do it. Do you remember that? Oh, my, I thought that was the funniest thing in the world. Um, but we don't have that in Science of Mind, OK? As much as I love Flip Wilson and as much as I love Geraldine, uh, we do not have uh, the devil made me do it. The, honest to God, this is why I think more people are not in the Science of Mind teaching. Because the Science of Mind requires such a level of personal accountability. There's so much personal responsibility in a metaphysical spiritual teaching like this that, it, that, you know, that if you're not up to it, it's just easier to say, no, I'm just going to blame my whole life not working out on the devil. Yep, that's it. Flip Wilson did it all to me. That's it. That was, you know, um, uh, but you know, when we don't have a devil to, to say, well, the devil caused these bad things to happen. Uh, the devil made me overstep. The devil made me lie. The devil made me cheat, whatever. You know, but people give up their God-given dominion. You know, and, and I think they, when they do that, or in the process, they, they get lazy, they ignore, they look the other way, they sell out, they compromise. Maybe they take for granted how good they actually have it. Now, I don't think that people are horrible. I really do not. But they just go along with things. I mean, we've seen that historically. People who were not bad people just didn't want to get involved. You know, now, I'm not saying that everybody is supposed to roll up their sleeves for everything. But I do think that if something catches our awareness, that means we're supposed to give good consciousness to it. We're supposed to give it good conscious attention. I remember a conversation with someone uh, a while back, and, and they were talking about something in the world that really, really disturbed them. And they went on and on and on about how upsetting it was, and this is wrong, and, and all this stuff. And they had really, really strong feelings about it. And so after they talked for a while, I said, so what are you doing about that? 
And they looked at me, it's like, well, I, I, I just told you. I said, no, you, you told me all you're upset with it. But I said, it's, you know, it's easy to be upset about things. But if, I think if something catches our attention again and again and again and again, it keeps coming around because we're supposed to do something about it. Now, it may be that what we're supposed to do about it is we say, OK, this is on my list. This is something I give prayerful attention to every day. This is something that I'm supposed it keeps catching my attention because I'm supposed to be involved in it, you know? So like this afternoon, we're gonna feed homeless people in the park. You know? So how many of us have said, oh my God, this homeless situation, it just seems to get worse, it seems to get worse, it seems to get worse. What's the solution? What's the solution? Well, you know, we're not trying to solve all of homelessness. We're just trying to bring people a nice lunch. Because, you know, think about it. If you were homeless, wouldn't it be at least a good thing to have a nice lunch? You know, so so right, so that's that's our part with this particular little piece. You know, so I, I bring that up because I know so many people who've said again and again and again, "Oh my God, this problem! It's just it just seems to grow. It seems to grow. It seems to grow." Well, remember that old axiom in the '60s that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And so I realize we don't have to solve everything, but if we're if some of our energy goes towards some solution. You know, and I realize not everybody is called to do everything. But you know, if you, if you look again and again and say, you know, I just hate that there is this level of domestic violence in America, or I just hate that children are abused, or I just hate that not every child has a loving home, or whatever it is for you, if that keeps coming around for you, that's because you're supposed to give it some of your best spiritual attention. And it may also mean that you're supposed to roll up your sleeves in that area. So um, the person I was talking about who uh, was not crazy about my response, as you can imagine, uh, there. Uh, but you know, that's why we come to church, to uh, comfort the agitated and agitate the comfortable. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is sort of the purpose of church, right? You know, I'm here to, I'm going to stir the pot a little bit for people, uh, but not so much that they all leave, you know? But just sort of stir the pot and keep those things that have sunk to the bottom floating to the top of the soup. Um, so. Uh, it's just easier, I think. Uh, it, it, it seems to me that it's easier to avoid things than to say, OK, I have to have the moral fiber uh, of doing what is right. You know, consciously living in support of, of, of what we value. You know, because so often we'll say, well, this is what I value. This is what's important to me, but, but I have to act that way in my life. I have to not just say, well, this is what's important. I have to, you know, it's like, it's like people will say, well, what's the, what do you think about, uh, what have you learned about relationships? And I said, well, you know, any relationship that we have that's a relationship worth having, it gets some of the best within us, right? If you think about it. You don't just give your most important relationships in life crumbs of your attention. You know, you can't just show up as the exhausted, needy, empty person in your relationship because that relationship will not be there for very long, right? That part of what happens is that when you show up for your relationships, and I don't care if this is a romantic relationship or your close interpersonal relationships, some of the best in you has to be present at least some of the time, you know? Or those relationships will not last. They will fall apart. You know, so the dominion that we are given, I think, is that we are here to be a powerful force for love in the world. You know, science of mind is not about that unhealthy kind of denial. You know, we don't look the other way. You know, we work with consciousness here on the earth plane. You know, the Dalai Lama, this was a great thing I read about His Holiness the Dalai Lama. He meditates for four hours every day. And then he works the rest of the day to free Tibet from China. And he says, but the gig is, those four hours of meditation that he does before he works to free Tibet from China, those four hours of meditation get him prepared so that in the work to free China, he never hates the Chinese. Wow, that's just, that's huge to me. You know that it takes him that amount of time and that amount of preparation so that, because he says, if I hate the Chinese, I've missed the point. You know, if I'm hating them, if I'm hating them because they're oppressing my, my, my people, he says, then, then, then I'm sort of missing it, right? And so we all see, we all experience different forms of darkness. Uh, but here's the thing. I believe that we notice it so that we, in our own mind, in our own consciousness, can dismantle it. 
You know, to get to the place of, you know, God's the only power, love is the only power, love is the only activity. Uh, remember that saying that, you know, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything? You know, and so I think it's important for us as students of the science of mind to know what is it we stand for? You know, do we stand for a world that's loving? Do we stand for a world that's peaceful? Do we stand for a world where everybody's needs are met? You know, I know our mind, for, this is so for every single person here, our mind is extraordinarily powerful. And so I would ask us this morning, what do we use our mind for? What are we using our mind in service of? A world that is filled with love or a world that is filled with hate and darkness? Because we can't say we believe in God if we aren't endeavoring to become more loving people. I believe that's really the bottom line here. Every thought, every word, every act contributes to a consciousness that's either filled with love and a consciousness filled with light, or a consciousness that's contributing more to the darkness, the seeming darkness that's on the earth. Because that's how, the, that's, and this is how the world we live in changes, either for one direction or the other. And it seems to me that we are at a time right now where it's very, very in vogue to agree with the darkness. You know? But that's not going to help us. That's not going to help anybody. You know, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it is no brilliant spiritual revelation to say, wow, there's a lot of darkness right now. No kidding. Be the light. Step on it. You know? We're, you know, this is not the time to play hard to get. This is the time to play beat the clock. Right? You know, because, and again, we have to remember, and I do, I do every day try to remember that people are basically good. You know? And with all that some people go through in life, it's actually, you know, people go through really difficult stuff. It's amazing to me that the world is, is not in worse shape than it is sometimes because people go through such extraordinary difficulty. You know, but, um, but there's an inherent goodness. There's an inherent goodness within every single person waiting to be called forth into expression. And so it seems to me that part of this also about God-given dominion is that when I'm reading the paper or I'm watching the news and I see what looks like not good, I get to call it something. And one of the things I also get to do is that I get to call forth the presence of God or the living spirit or the love intelligence or the Christ in that person. I get to call that forth. I get to be the one who says, you know, all of this that's happening, this is appearance. But I know that presence of the living God that is a spiritual, dynamic presence is in them. And I recognize it now. I call it forth. I call forth the love, the Christ, the peace, the joy, whatever that is. Um, in, because we live in a universe of cause and effect, right? So if I call it good, if I call it love, then that at least lights another little candle in the universe. Um, people will often talk about how they, they really want to do something great in the world. Well, you know, I think something great we do in the world is when we say, I want to be a big vessel for God. I want to be a big vessel for spirit's expression into the world. And to me, what that means is that I'm not going to look the other way, that when something catches my attention, I'm at least going to speak my word for, for love and light and healing and peace there. You know, great spiritual masters through time have shown us the way. If we look at the life of Buddha and Jesus and Moses and on and on, sometimes I think it's really easy to get sidetracked off of what's important. You know, when we all get, get, get very caught up in the lower level concerns. You know, I have so many things to do. I don't have time to be concerned about this right now. Let other people handle it. Um, I'm busy. Uh, you know, I don't have time. I, I'm, I love this one. I'm so busy, I don't have time to be loving. It's like, oh, actually, we don't have time not to. And, and that, that also, to me, is really setting very interesting karma in, in play. So, so think about this. What do you value most in your life? Maybe it's the love of your family and friends. It could be your personal freedom. It may be that you value beauty. It may be that you value uh, the ability to express creatively. Um, but really think about that this, this week. Think about what do I really, really value? And then my encouragement to all of us is to not just know, but to affirm, to treat, to pray. And, and when God taps you on the shoulder, you know, when something gets your attention, that is not a haphazard thing. It's gotten your attention because you're supposed to bring some of the best that is within you, the love and the light and the healing word. You're supposed to bring that into that experience. Let's pray and do that right now. Thanks. So we turn our attention inward now, remembering that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. 
It's a spirit of intelligence and peace and goodness in every way. And so I know we are all connected with God and connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And I speak the word for us today that, yes, indeed, we have dominion. We have an ability. We have been given this incredible gift by that presence of God within us to call everything we experience what we choose to call it. And I know for us, we call it good. We call it loving. We call forth that presence of the living spirit in everyone that we encounter and everyone we see. And I know that from this, from this, this has a creative power in our life and in our world, and only good comes from this. So whatever it is we're thinking of this week, whatever it is that may weigh heavily on our mind, I speak this word for us that we have dominion of how we participate, how we respond, how we speak about that situation. And I know that it's turning around for each and every one of us right here, right now. So we let our prayer be a blessing in the lives of our family members and friends, all of those we hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye, and we know that they are surrounded by love, that they are actually the incarnation of love itself, and that their lives are unfolding perfectly according to their own consciousness and their own soul's destiny. We know this is true for the world that we live in, so all things that are pulling at our attention we open our hearts wide and we add love and light and healing into all of those situations. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is healing, that there is raising up, that there is a conscious upliftment for all of us that actually makes the world a better place. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.